y'all and welcome back to another Photography Friday. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome! Every Friday we go over tips, tools, and techniques for my fellow photographers and media business owners in order to better expand their craft. In today's episode, we're talking about newborn and infant photography. But first, if you have not done so, make sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. Do feel free to check out my Monday episodes as well, where we go over post-production techniques. Infant and newborn photography is anywhere from zero days old all the way up to about six weeks to eight weeks old. After that, we get into small child. You can even expand all the way up to three to six months if you'd like to include that in your studio. But newborn and infant photography typically lasts all the way up to about eight weeks old. Newborn photography, it is very, very important to prioritize safety first. Safety first, safety first. I cannot stress it enough, and I'll probably say it about 10 times in this video, safety first. Always prioritize the safety of your infant and newborns. That is why it's important to have a parent or someone who brings them to their session, another adult, to be within arm's length. You need to have them right next to that infant at all times, just in case. Infants and babies are one of the top type of client that needs to be watched and manicured and maintained and just really kept safe. Safety, safety. This baby is going to need to be held, brought out of those posing positions and be held and soothed and just really be rocked back and forth. That baby is going to need to be fed. That baby is going to need to be changed. That baby is going to need to be cleaned up afterwards. So you're going to have to prioritize the needs of that client and the needs of their infant first and foremost. So sessions are going to take a little bit longer. Just be patient and account for that time. Tell your client that your session needs to be between one hour and three hours and that payment can be done accordingly based on the needs of that baby. Newborn and infant photography is a very specialized field. You can expand your studio to children and families and other individual portraits, but most newborn photographers are meat and potatoes newborn photographers. This is because there's props that need to be involved, there's extensive training that you should take or at least do your research on before you invite infants and newborns into your studio space. So do your homework and sterilization especially if you have babies coming in and out multiple times a week, you need to prioritize sterilization with safety because babies and infants, especially before 10 days old, are very susceptible to getting sick. They're very susceptible to getting injured because their circulation hasn't developed yet. Their muscles haven't developed yet. On one note, that's a really good thing because you can put them in poses for a long, long time and they're not going to wiggle all over the place, but you need to be conscious of their underdeveloped bodies. Some things to be very, very conscious of when you're working with newborns is circulation, temperature, motion, and balance. These four are very, very important. Temperature, babies like it warm. A cold studio does not make for a happy baby. A warm studio, you can even bring a space heater in, will make for a successful session because that baby likes those warm environments and is more susceptible to sleep within those warm environments. Circulation, do not have your baby hold this pose for 30 minutes because you're going to lose circulation in this part of their arm and they're going to be very miserable and you can do some serious damage. Balance, do not have your baby topple over anywhere because that can increase brain activity or decrease brain activity and seriously injure that child. Their balance is important, so do not put them in weird contortionate positions, not expecting them to roll over. And if they do roll over, you don't want them to roll off the big pillow you have them on. Safety, balance, balance is, is crucial. Do not put your baby into any weird positions. Just make sure that baby is going to be comfortable. Motion. Motion to a baby is like a supersonic roller coaster. So make sure to make small movements with that child. Make sure that you don't manhandle that child and toss it all over the place. Make sure your movements are determined. Make sure that you are translating and speaking in a calm voice so that you're not giving that baby motion sickness. So let's talk about working with clients, not only the parent, but also the infant. 
working with the client, you need to be competent. You need to know what you're doing or at least pretend like you know what you're doing. You need to have a presence about you because you are the leader of this session. The baby is going to dictate how the session goes, but you are the tour guide. You are keeping everybody on schedule and everybody in line, allowing for a little flexibility, but just be confident and be understanding of the needs of that baby. Make the parent comfortable. Even if it's an aunt or an uncle, mostly it's going to be the mom or the dad that brings this infant to the session. Make sure they're comfortable. Don't make them stand for hours. Give them a place to sit near the baby. Give them something to, to drink. Make sure that they are comfortable as well because they just had a baby and they're probably exhausted. Or their wife or husband who brings the baby is, is going to need to sit down. That, that is, might have been the, the first time that that parent has not been around a bunch of parents asking, how's it going? Where's the baby? What's going on? Make that person comfortable. Make sure that they know that your studio is a safe spot and not just another stressful environment within this first form of that baby's life. You need to give them a safe place. Give them a place to sit down, give them something to drink, Talk to them about how they're doing and how their process is going and really just get an understanding for where they are at as well. They will really appreciate that and chances refer you to somebody else because they know you're awesome to work with and they'll probably also hire you again for maybe their other children's photos or their family photos or refer you to a family member who also has children. So think about building your business and building your relationship at all times. Lastly, in working with clients, make sure to not wear any aggressive fragrances or aftershave or perfumes, anything that's going to be a smell to that baby. That baby has some heightened senses and gets fussy with anything that is not familiar. So make sure that you don't have any weird candles burning or a, you know, a heavy pet smell in your studio space. Make sure that everything is clean and sterilized and just has no smell. Everything is just unscented. Now let's talk about props. Sterilization and cleanliness is number one. I don't care if they're your props. I don't care if they're the parents' props. I don't care if it's something they just bought off the shelf. It is important to sterilize and clean the props that you use in your baby and infant session, especially if this baby or infant is like 10 days old or less. Because they are very susceptible to getting sick, you don't want to get that baby an illness, you don't want to be coughing, you don't want to be sneezing because that baby is very fragile. So make sure everything is clean, everything is sterilized, and you are putting the priorities of the safety and well-being of that client, the infant, first. Next, do you need props? No, you do not. You do not need to have a full inventory worth of props to successfully be a baby or infant photographer. Why? Because Everything is free at that client's house, so have your session at the person's house. Have it in their natural environment with their cribs and their toys and their rocking chairs and their pillows. You don't have to bring anything other than just you and your camera and your extra batteries and memory cards and maybe an off-camera fill flash. Not a strobe, but a fill. That's it. That's all you need. You don't have to have props. But if you want to have props and want to have an inventory of something to get you started, Get yourself a bean bag. It's a big, heavy bean bag. Um, you know, don't get one that's like a, at a thrift store from an old college dorm room. They make giant bean bags that have smaller pill in them so that they hold form and they're a little bit firmer. Also, having blankets, blankets with textures, blankets with you know fuzziness, blankets that have a little meshing to them. Think swaddling, you know, swaddling cloths. They don't have to be official swaddling cloths. You can always just go to your local fabric store and pick up some fabrics that look pretty to wrap around a white swaddle. You don't have to have props, but having additional colors and textures and just objects to add interest to the background and pump up the look of the image really, really help. So dark skin babies, pastel colors. Light skin babies use textures and maybe darker colors. You want to give a contrast to that baby's skin. You want to complement their eyes and maybe if they have any hair. You want to just showcase the pinky in their skin. Pick props that complement the baby. Pick props that will help accentuate the personality of the baby. This is why it's important to talk to the parents 
and find out what kind of baby this is. What is the family into? Are they football fans? Do they really love more of the floral accents? Are they somebody who is more of a high fashion family? You know, pearls and diamonds and tiaras. These are objects that you can have just to pull out of your wheelhouse. Other than a bean bag, it is great to have a variety of pillows. The pillows that you need to have should be, you know, regular bed pillows. You can have little small square couch pillows. You can have rolled tube pillows. You can also use towels for this as well. You know, roll towels and kind of make a full body pillow for that baby. Get creative with the objects you put underneath blankets and other texture platforms to give shape to this baby. You want to bend the baby in a certain way and give them kind of an angelic sort of laying look and get images from all around the infant. Making the most of that platform and that backdrop material. Just make sure to ask the parents of the infant if they have anything to contribute to the props of the session. Ask about allergies. If you are bringing any props into the session, if that baby is allergic to wool, if that baby is allergic to polyester, if that baby is allergic to pets and you have pets somewhere in your house, make sure to ask the parent about allergies as well. Within working with clients, make sure to conduct yourself carefully and professionally. Make sure that you are understanding how to communicate with a baby. You need to speak in soft, calm tones and timbres in your voice. You need to have big eyes and excitement and make sure that you are encouraging the baby through the session. Give them positive vibes and positive thoughts and that engagement and entertainment with your eyes and your smile. I like to flirt with them with my hair and big jewelry. That's very successful but make sure that you entertain that baby as you are shooting. And this is where maybe a tripod can come into handy. That way you have the length and the cropping and everything you want on the baby and you can just come from above the camera and really just encourage the baby to be happy and encourage a successful session and encourage them just to stay positive if that baby is awake. Within conducting yourself carefully, also make sure to communicate with the parent every move you make. I'm going to move their arm this way. I'm going to lay their head this way. I'm going to fold their arms this way. If that parent knows step by step what you are doing, they will feel more comfortable in your studio session and they will actually be able to help you out to make sure that both of your visions get achieved. Make sure to be confident and knowledgeable. Research posing. Research infant posing online and have a bank, maybe a bank of images saved on your phone or just something that you refer back to. I used a lot of, you know, flip folder posing. That way I could kind of refer to my, my clients, parents, you know, what, what do you, what do you guys like this more? Do you like this more? What, what is, what is more successful for you guys? What do you like to see? What would you like to do? So be knowledgeable and be educated on posing and options. That way you won't, mm, uh, what, what should we do next? Uh, well, we already kind of tried that. What should, no, you want to say, let's try this. Let me get these different angles. Let me get this. You don't want to waste that baby's time. You don't want to waste that parent time. And especially since that baby could erupt at any moment, you want to make the most out of every moment, out of every second. So once you shoot, 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 move on to another, move on to another, keep the flow going as long as that baby gives you permission. So let's talk about gear and camera settings. You don't need to have a bunch of fancy lenses. You don't need to have a bunch of camera bodies strewn all over your, your person. You need to just have a DSLR camera and a lens of 50 to 85 millimeter is the most successful. You can also just use your phone if that's all you have and you're just getting started off, but just make sure that you are able to work in the pro mode so you are able to use the most out of your aperture settings. Your aperture needs to be on a lower number. The highest depth of field you should have is probably right around a 5.6 because you want to incorporate that intimate moment feel into your newborn photography. This intimate feel is achieved with a shallower depth of field. If you are showcasing the full length of the infant's body, I would maybe bump your f-stop a little bit, but I really wouldn't, I really wouldn't very often. Play with your perspective and angles for your full length shot. Even if you want to do a straight above, almost like a baby flat lay, that's, that's very successful. But don't saturate your portfolio for that session with just a bunch of flat lays. 
make sure to perspective and angles and really get the viewpoint of that baby as it's growing and just personality. It's all about showcasing every inch of that child. So if you do need to make those compromises with the settings in your camera, instead of bumping up your aperture, try bumping up your ISO and your shutter speed. Make sure to capture all of the intimate details of this infant. What I'm talking about is get pictures of just their little ears, get pictures of their hands, get pictures of their feet, their little knees, their little chunky rolls, get pictures of all of the intimate details as well as the baby's face. When you do take pictures of the baby's face, make sure to pose them creatively. You don't just want it to be another newborn photo. Make sure that the focus is the baby's face and crop with intention. Crop with your different perspectives and your different angles and work all around the baby. Yes, this subject matter is in a very small package, but there are so many little details that you can showcase and angles and perspectives to really bring this image to life. Use natural lighting instead of artificial lighting if possible. I would very much discourage a flash. That is too aggressive for infant photography. You want something that's more of a fill light, not a strobe. You want a calming environment and not having these aggressive flashes of light will create that environment for you. So use natural light and bounce light back with a reflector. Give that baby a calming environment when it comes to the lighting. When it comes to showcasing the details, the purpose is this. This baby over the course of three months is going to change drastically. They may look more like their mom, they may look more like their dad, and then the next time you see it, this baby looks totally different because it's grown. It's grown into its features, it's grown into everything that it, its genetics have to offer it. So showcase the small details and use it as an opportunity to get more sit time with this baby in the future to encourage getting the change over time. So showcase the details. Show how his little feet grow. Show how her little hands are crooked. Show how her, you know, the little curl on her hair. And just pay attention to all of the intimate details of this little teeny small package. If you can incorporate the parents as well, that is wonderful. A lot of parents are just like, I don't want my picture taken. Try to incorporate them though. If you can even just lay a blanket over, you know, over their chest and have them holding the baby so just the hands are being held or holding them, you know, on their chest up here, getting their hands in the photo, that is very successful. If you can get a full length picture of this baby just in their arms or even just holding them like a football, that one's very successful for the dads. And if you can get some attitude out of that baby as well with encouragement from the parent, just incorporate the parent even if they don't want their face to be seen. If they're okay with their face being seen, then you have limitless possibilities. Play around with incorporating the parent, incorporating the siblings that they come with them, incorporate their family. Now let's talk about the session itself. The session itself is going to be anywhere from one hour to four hours. I would not go down below one hour and I probably wouldn't go above four hours because no one's going to be happy. One hour to four hours is kind of a sweet spot. You can, you can always just talk to the parent and you know kind of just work out. We're gonna block this much time out and then my hourly rate is this. Your hourly rate should go no lower than $30 an hour. Just value your work more, guys. Value your work more. If you are an amateur or you are just getting started, start at $30 an hour to $50 an hour. More experienced baby photographers, you're talking more like $100 to $200 an hour, if not more, depending on their experience and their ability to work within that field. Their props, their equipment, their travel, all that kind of stuff but make sure to value your work. And a typical baby session is going to cost a client anywhere from about $100 to about $300, and even greater if you're in the more experienced level. Shoot in raw. I cannot stress it enough. Even if it's JPEG raw, make sure that you are shooting in raw format within your camera to help with editing abilities later on. Make the environment comfortable and welcoming and encouraging and just a positive attitude and a positive vibe within your studio space. 
Waterproof pads will be a lifesaver under all of your fabrics and equipment. You don't want to ruin a $300 pillow because an infant ruined it. Which, I mean, it happens, guys. You're in infant photography, you're in baby photography, and babies will throw up on things. So make sure that you have a waterproof pad available to protect your belongings and make a less stressful environment for that parent as well because they know that nothing can't be replaced or that they're ruining these big objects of your prop closet because their baby threw up like babies do. I've already mentioned space heaters and white noise machines are also really successful if you have a noisy studio space or if you just are having trouble getting that baby to focus. White noise machines or just calming music on your phone will kind of create a blanket of a soothing atmosphere for not only you, the parent, but also the baby. Next is the baby's outfits during a session. How do you transition from outfit to outfit? With normal people, it's so easy just, hey, run in there and change or just, you know, put this on real quick. But with a baby, there has to be a purpose to it. So once that baby comes into your studio space, they get fed, they get burped while you're kind of welcoming them and introducing them to the space and really just going back over the timeline, that baby then could be in nothing but a diaper and, you know, put a little cover on it. Or if that baby is, you know, not going to pee all over the place, you can have a few naked baby shots and just, you know, put their little bum with perspective, you know, in the back behind them, you know, get some pictures of their, you know, the full legs or just having a few naked baby shots is, is really cute is really really cute then work them into a diaper with a little cover up work them into a onesie after that work them into a you know something a little bit warmer something a little bit heavier if they if it's in their in their uniforms but make sure that you go and build up with the outfits rather than removing clothes from the outfits because you don't want to ruin the clothing by that baby throwing up on it or you know that baby getting sick or, or having an accident just I would work up with the clothing rather than working down with the clothing I'd probably suggest somewhere between three to five outfits max don't go over that and make sure that you give yourself enough time in the session to get that baby changed for any mishaps you know he ruined this outfit she ruined that outfit it's just make sure that you give yourself enough time within your session to incorporate those changes and if you don't have enough time then cut the outfit changes last in my session suggestions no distracting elements this goes for in studio as well as out of studio i wouldn't suggest too many out of studio baby sessions that's just not encouraged but studio sessions need to be a controlled environment it needs to be calm it needs to be quiet and it needs to be without distraction. So don't have a ticking fan, don't have a ticking clock, don't have a noisy heater, don't have a flash, don't have something that's going to pull the attention away or startle that infant so that they stay calm. You want a calm baby. Anything that's going to wake up a sleeping baby is not what you want to incorporate. Lastly, let's talk about marketing your business. You need to go where babies are or will be. This is baby stores places where baby stuff is sold i know a lot of those people might be buying gifts but they know somebody who is having a baby so go and you know just pass your business cards out inside of a babies r us or a bye bye baby just market yourself where babies are you can also go to smaller boutique stores for babies and place your business cards or your promotional gear you can also go to you know pre-parenting class because these people are about to have a baby and market yourself there as well so get creative and find out where your clients already exist and go and market yourself there structure your marketing materials to show your work baby and infant photography is greatly increased by word of mouth so if you find a client who sees your work and they pass that work on to somebody else that they know that they would like then you'll get more clients so make sure that your business cards have pictures that are proof of concept make sure that your website and your Facebook and your Instagram and all of your social media platforms have proof of your concept now if you are just starting out and you are taking photos of your friends and family members babies make sure to get model releases and permission and let them know what your intentions with those photos are 
you're not going to sell them, but they are going to go on your web-based platforms. A lot of parents will not be okay with that. So make sure you ask beforehand and they'd rather know that that's going to happen than be surprised that it's going to happen. If you are not able to publish these images on the web, make sure to get them printed and put them in a tangible book portfolio. This will be used to show potential clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis instead of putting these infants all over the web and not having the permission of the parents, which it doesn't go well, guys. It doesn't go well. Always get permission to post on social media and post on your social platforms to build your business. Don't just assume that it's okay. When you're writing the copy for your websites, don't just write, I like babies, so I'd be a good photographer. Write descriptive answers about how you love the smell of newborn babies, you love working with you know, the growth process, you love showcasing the infant details, you love integrating the feel of a family within your shoot. Talk to them about what drives you and don't just say, I like babies. Give description of whys build it with experience and your research and your training that you have talk to them like a professional on your social media platforms and on your website parents are going to need to trust you so make sure to build that trust when you go through marketing tell them exactly what to expect from you tell them exactly the kind of photographer you are and don't expand on your experience tell them what your experience is what your training is even if it's very limited that transparency will go a long way with the parent trusting you as an individual because this parent is potentially going to want more than just one session. Parents love to show updated sessions of their babies. They'll get pictures of this baby just born. They'll get pictures of a week old, a month old, two months old, six months old, and then you're integrated in the family permanently and you're taking family photos, you're taking other sibling photos, building your business. It's all about the next step. Where do you want to be now and where do you want to go to? Where do you want your future clients to come from? Infant photography, newborn photography, it is a great way to build lifelong clients. So I do hope that this video was helpful on infant photography and how to successfully perform newborn photography sessions. Make sure to leave in the comments below any tips and tricks you have for your fellow photographers when it comes to infant and newborn photography and ways to build an infant and photography business. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe and ring the bells if you have not done so already. Looking forward to seeing you guys in next week's episode. Make sure to tune in on Monday when we go over post-production techniques for newborn photography. I'm Jane Corley with PicVisions Media Arts and Photography. See you later, guys.